welcome to the Everything Sparkle Show. I am so excited about our first guest. He has a really great message. Bryce, how are you today? I'm well, thanks. How are you? <laughs> um, tell me how this project got started and how many hikers you're going to need for this mission in Yosemite. Because you said you needed more. Correct. What's our vision? How? What's our goal of how many hikers we're going to get? Well, the park only allows me to have a maximum of 10 people for an overnight extent. So that's the max amount of hikers I can have. Currently I have one with a possible P. So it's just myself as it stands right now. However, on the weekend, Saturday, August 10th and the 11th, there are multiple people coming up just for the weekend venture because we're walking on popular day hiking trails that are in Yosemite. Okay, what started this mission? Okay, so with the 22 Mini, there's a lot of studies done through the VA um, that talk about the average amount of veterans, military service members committing suicide every day is 22. So they took that average, said 22, too many, and a lot of different organizations have taken that and created different charities based off of that information. So I, re- I work or represent 22 too many. Um, they actually do wear pictures um, of people who have taken their own lives so when we're out there walking in Yosemite we have pictures of someone who's taken their their who started 22 too many there are three women who who did this out on the east coast I don't know specifics of where they are but that's mostly where they work and they travel up and down doing marathons 5ks Mm -hmm. uh, to do that and then I just asked five years ago like instead of running can I walk through Yosemite and Instead of doing it for a day or doing the traditional 22, can I walk for a week and just spread awareness for for an entire week? And they granted me permission to do that, and I've been, this is my fifth year uh, doing that. What made you want to get involved with this? Well, um, myself, I kind of deal with certain issues, too, that can kind of put someone into a dark place. So I have, I myself suffer from PTSD from my tours that I did in Iraq three times, Um, So I want to be an advocate for those who are thinking that maybe committing suicide might be a better way, but it's not. And you can talk to other individuals who have been through difficult times, and we can share those talks and come out and walk, and you can put all that anger and that distress into the ground and switch out the pain, in a sense. Is there any... um any solution that's really going anything active that people are really actively doing to stop this problem because it's just it's a continuous problem i have a lot this is a very serious issue that's near and dear to my heart because i have a lot of friends that have suffered through this um and one of my friends had to go through a fifty thousand dollar program treatment program that was not covered by the va um i've had other friends that just the it seems like they don't cover a lot and there's like a lot of problems i know i might be upsetting people but this is serious and I you know what have you heard what about what's going on well um, from my own personal experience um, I actually went through the VA and I seek I do counseling with the VA up in Oakhurst Uh, occasionally I'll go in and just talk to somebody and just have that outlet it's it's nice to sit around with the old guys from the olden wars and just kind of be like amongst true war heroes in a sense somebody that gets it yeah exactly and it's just it feels comfortable that way um it's just a a change in mindset that has to happen and it's difficult when you're faced with like survivor's remorse or um thinking you're not adding up to what's going on at the same time you're trying to be humble because you did what you did because nobody else wanted to, and it's something that you're passionate for. So you have to fight through all these dark channels um, and not go down that route. And so that mindset change has to happen by wanting to seek help. Um, you don't have to go see someone professional. Again, you can just see another fellow soldier and just talk. And that's going to be the biggest thing to move forward is to let people talk. Because if they can't talk, they can't get that out to let that aggression go in a different channeling um you know if you sit around your house and you you mope and you look at the bottom of a bottle thinking the answer's there it there's something at the bottom of the bottle it's absolutely nothing it's just an empty bottle (laughs) um 
but what is like of a as a community what we could do how can we reach out um What's something that proactive that we could do? I think that by letting people know that there are others that care, just even those who aren't in the service, to let them know that, hey, somebody cares about you. Um, the community is reaching out and saying, hey, you can come over here. Um, what can we do to help mitigate the stress that you're going through in the civilian world? Because that's the difficult life sometimes is just day-to-day -day life. Transitioning. Yes, correct. Well, um... My understanding, and tell me if I'm wrong and if you want to accurately like depict it, I feel like there's always like a battle going on in your head that you can't shut off PTSD. That, that's how I would like, that, so it's like you have no control over that ongoing movie that you can't shut off or that battle going on. Is that how you would describe this type of PTSD? Yeah. Um for me, it's more smells and sounds. Sometimes I'll be doing, thinking like, I'm just having really good, I'm sleeping, everything's well, and then I'll hear something, or a certain sense will come in. Uh, diesel fuel burning somehow does something, um, and certain thumps will aggravate and, and bring something up. Right when you think that you're just over it, over it something happens. And, you, and then that infuriates you because you think you're doing so much better and then that and pops you're in, you're like, and you're like, that spot again. seriously, again? So it just, that, the form is different for each individual. So I have a buddy that um, the smell of chicken being cooked, he'll eat chicken, but he can't be there while it's being cooked. It, it sets him off. So there's just those different things that, um, that based on how your PTSD is triggered is how you kind of, how you have to figure out how to fight through it. And, to be honest, uh, that's why I got into real estate. I do real estate on the side so I could talk to people because it was hard for me to interact with normal folk when I came back, not to use four letter words when you're having a conversation with somebody. In the real world, it doesn't, it's not an approved approach. <laughs> no. <laughs> Um, well, no, one of my good friends with PTSD, you know, we're at a Starbucks, and I just felt this constant just state of just, you know, he's he like, well, this is why I have to sit by the door, and yeah. every time something opened, it was just like, you know, there was so much just going on that there was no way for him to relax. It was just such a struggle to see, like, that going on. It was, like, always kind of that flight or fight. Um, it is. Survival. There was never, like, <sighs> and so is that part of what the problem is? Yeah, and I, I also recognize those demons, and I'll sit there and sit with my back to the door just to try to, but I only do it when I'm with people I trust, so that way it's a slower, it, that's my transition, that's what I'm doing to tr help with my transition, is to be able to sit with my back to the door and just try to work through that, because it is, you're always constantly scanning who, where's going on, where's the closest exit, who who look shady in your mindset, wow. what's happening, how can I protect the people I'm with if something bad happens. And you can't turn that off. It's kind of like a background, like, it's, it's yeah. just like, mm, you think it's off, like a but profiling it's, almost. Correct, like. yeah, you're not <laughs> doing it intentionally, but when you're but out just, on patrol, yeah. that's what you did. You, okay, if we come into contact here, where am I going? Where are my guys, where's this, and, and who am I gonna talk to? So those are the things that you're going through when you're there, and then when you come home, sitting in the restaurant, you're trying to figure out how not to do that but that's that's the difficult part and to get that to shut off can be difficult but thinking that taking your life is the way to do it is not the way to shut it off isn't it mainly to calm all of that because you don't think you can ever get better and all that noise that's going on in your head and nightmares because some people are just living every time they go to sleep it's just not isn't that part of the reason why it gets to that point Correct. And can you explain a little bit about nightmares? Yeah, so like night terrors in a sense. Um, sometimes when you've been overexposed, my myself, I I do like my two weeks I'm still supposed to do in the National Guard, and I'll get overexposed being in that environment, sleeping outside, playing, doing the Army realm. And then I'll come home trying to relax, and things will happen. I'll go back into memories while you're sleeping, and it's not... Most of the time I can't remember, all I know is that I'm waking up sweating and it means I was dreaming of something 
or I'm thinking about times over there and I wake up. And that's, you don't ever really get into REM. And so there's a lot of sleeping disorders. Right. So by not going through all the complete sleep cycles, that, that hurts you as an individual anyways. Even if, if you're doing the gym or going to working just to be a normal person, you have to have those sleep cycles. You have to sleep. And when you're not sleeping, it messes with you. Sleep deprivation is not fun. And um, have you heard of EMDR therapy? Have you ever tried that? No. I have not. No well, it's rumored that that's supposed to actually be a cure for PTSD. I, I've heard, and then I did, one of the friend that I was telling you about had taken it, but he also said that the VA wasn't covering that particular therapy. The VA has, like, their therapists they go to, because EMDR is, like, a newer... or it's, Correct. okay. So, is there a way... How can we make things change which, within the VA or within, like, everybody getting the help that they really need? Well, I think with the first step of being able not to go to the VA that was, that was implemented, being able to go to outside source, and the VA still covers that, like a traditional right, healthcare right, right. in a sense. Um, I think that those new um, ideas for mental health will be more uh, easier embraced and be able to be paid for. I just think it's... it's it's the government. Nothing ever happens overnight. Is that something that we're working towards? Because I don't know. Because I, I mean, because you're in this, I'm thinking you're getting more of an inside word. Is that something that's you hear as a possibility of happening? Right. With more and more people going and seeking the help, and more and more people, you know, the com- just the community asking questions. Why can't we do this? Why can't they? Like you're asking. Right. Why can't they do that? It triggers other people to ask those same questions, and I think that as time goes, I, I don't see an issue why any of that wouldn't be an acceptable practice. And so when you get with your buddies from back then, I know a lot of times you guys all move to different areas, so like, I don't know if you guys get a reunion like once a year, and you try to catch up. Do you guys go to those dark places and talk about it, or do you guys really put on this front that everything is okay, hey, we made it, this is our family now, and don't talk about those things? What's been your experience? Um, it's more of a, it's there, it's like the white elephant in the room sometimes. Yeah. Um, and it, it does get brought up. Um, alcohol does induce a lot of those memories. Um, but at the same time, it allows you to talk, and because you're with a friend, they, they do come up, but um, usually it's not happening inside at the bar. It'll be walking out to the car or when they come over to your house on a more personal level. Not, not very much happens at the bar other than talking about what happens in the sense of, hey, that was really cool when this happened, or do you remember Joe Snuffy when he did that? Those are more what the memories are, happy, fun, exciting events. And then if it's darker, that usually happens going to the car or somebody comes over and wants to just talk more or less at the bar because that's trying to the bar is more of an escape and to be with your friends is that's the escape it's to disappear for a little bit and try not to bring that up are there things going on now to educate people maybe getting into the military because I think a lot of people going in it's like okay I might lose a limb I might lose my life no one really thinks hey I might lose my mind this is like something that happens later is are you guys going into like with the younger people are going in and saying hey not we're not discouraging you from serving your country but these are some things that to be aware of are we doing any of that or not really yes we have a lot of mental health it it literally takes up a lot of conversation that happens in the military yes and so um I did three years on active duty, but I did all of my time now has been in the National Guard. So on my drill weekends, um, those are part of our conversations. And then we have counselors. I went to a seminar to learn how to be in a counselor to soldiers at a smaller level, not at the... If it's too extreme, then I take it to the officers who deal with mental health more, but I'm just an advocate that they can come to and talk to and say I'm having issues, and then I teach classes on different ways of dealing with stress and understanding that this is a real thing that can happen and to, know to, and to be able to recognize those things when they are happening so you can step away or try to change your mindset before it completely takes over. That's good. I'm glad that that's happening. It has to. 
it has to. And it has to also not be, you know, I might be sick, but I'm not like, I shouldn't be judged based off of those things just because I don't sleep well sometimes or certain things irritate me quicker than most people. I shouldn't have to be judged on those things. And that's what we're trying to let people know is it's not a disease as they try to make it to be. It's just there's, if you saw something that most people aren't ever going to see, but there's different levels. I mean, you don't have to be in the military to, to have PTSD. You could, I know. <laughs> you could, something could happen to you in the civilian world that could cause the same thing. So it's, it's just understanding and, and having an outlet, I think, is the biggest key. And that's what I always tell my soldiers is don't take what you think is the easy way out. There's 30 of us in this room. You can talk to any one of us. So it's just that's where it needs to start. So have you experienced with friends close to you that have taken their lives? Or? I'm fortunate. I have. So my buddies have not done that. I have had a friend who's whose buddy did and he contacted me last year and those pictures that we wear on our backs I went to 22 too many and asked them to research it and they said yes this did happen so they then created a, a picture of him and we wore him on our back well one of the guys wore him on his back last year when we walked in Emirates so yeah it it touches it hits it could be somebody but it's it's just letting people know that they're they're not forgotten. We understand they went through a hard time, even though they have taken their life. But at the same time, we're saying, we're remembering you, we got you, and we're gonna support you out here until it's, until it's our time to go home. Wow. Um, so Yosemite, who started the Yosemite hike, though? You started it. I did. And did this happen, how long has this been going on? Okay, so the hike's been going on for five years. Okay. For five years. Um, I actually did one in 2009 before my last deployment in 2010. I did it for the Wounded Warrior Project. Nice. And after coming home, I was like, man, I need to start doing this again and trying to help people. And so I just was like, let's do something crazy and let's go hike through Yosemite and try to survive. Because it... Um, those going to the gym and and those type of pain that's caused. I mean, there's that short time where you where you lapse on on what you're thinking negatively because you're just trying to make it. There's like you know, like kind of like a coming to Jesus moment at sometimes where it's like, hey, could you just zap me to the top of the mountain? I won't tell nobody because I hurt really really bad and I can't make the next six miles. You know, so it's just like a, a just a your your whole thought process is left right left right. So I get to the next rest point so I can sleep. And that takes away that that pain that's upstairs in your head and it puts it in your feet and your back and your shoulders and you just focus on that and you forget about everything else that's bothering you. And that's the biggest thing with the hike. It's it's a it's a way to get away from it all. So are you just looking for other um veterans or you're looking for civilians also and to yeah, do the hike, right? Correct, yeah, absolutely. Anybody who wants to come along who wants to walk for seven days. Um, we have somebody who sponsored the food. So your food's taken care of if you come for all seven days. If you just come for the two days, you'll have to provide your own food and snacks for that time frame. But I have your main courses and your water supply for all seven days, if, you, if whoever decides to go. That's good. And you can just reach out to me on the website or through Facebook at 22 Too Many Yosemite, and you can ask the questions and see the routes for the first day that we're going to be taking. And did you do the last few years? I always say you said it's for five years ago. Did you do each or just the one in 2009? No, I've, each year. Each so this, year. Yeah, this will be my fifth year. We've we've had fires in Wawona that have caused us to change locations where we wow. start. <laughs> um, we've changed the route. What happens is, is having those pictures on our backs really implements people to talk. And we set these deadlines like, hey, today we're going to walk 13 miles and we have so many hours to do it. We never make those deadlines because we're interacting with people on the trail the whole time. And which is the purpose of the hike is to enlighten people about what's happening in the world of suicide amongst veterans. 
So it, it, it takes a long time. So what should only six, we only plan to walk for six hours and sometimes we walk for 12. Um, and there's been a rise in the suicide per day, correct? I mean, that's what the, there's been an increase. Right. And that just, um, it's just that fluctuation that happens. You know, I don't know if it's because it, the awareness is there that maybe people just see that as something to do, or is it just where at a certain time where everybody's just at their wits end at the same time and they just just can't cope anymore? It's the numbers is a difficult game to play. Is it? You can think you're doing good for a time and then something happens and you're, you're it feels like you're going backwards. That's what I'm saying. More <laughs> needs to be done. Yes, it does, and it. It's just as much awareness that can get brought out there, sharing um, and bringing up that that you care is a, a vital role to what's going on. Well, I really hope that people watching this, will, it'll take some effect on them and that they will go on this walk. And then I'm also hoping that we could really make a big change, like we could write our city councilman or do something to just spread awareness so that we can really properly take care of our military. Yes. So they can really get the help that they need and get more of this advanced therapy that's... It's out there and it's... It's our... Our being veterans, it's, it's our step first. And that's what's going to be the hardest. So... My first tour in Iraq was 2004. I didn't seek help till 2011. And why was that? Pride, uh, a feeling that I didn't do as much as somebody else. I have, I have all my limbs. I'm just messed up upstairs, but I mean, I'm, I can function. I have my eyesight and you know, having disformities, so I didn't feel that I. Um, I needed the assistance that was out there as other soldiers that have experienced more trauma than I have. So I felt less of an individual because of it. So it, it just took some time to say, hey, something's not right. I need to talk to somebody. Did therapy help a lot that you did again? Yeah, and it, it, it kind of told me like different what white noise is. So like I go sleep with TV on or having electronics on before you go to bed. It's just like the worst thing in the world, but I didn't know. It's what I did to, to sleep. To just be so bored after watching TV, you just fall asleep. But that sound's always in the background and it's not really helping you like you think it is. So it, it, it has helped. It allows me to talk to somebody and then it just helps me be able to be someone that others can talk to as well. And we have the website, um for the 22 Too Many, because like, you guys are also taking donations. Yes. So 22 Too Many is who all the money goes to that's raised. And they're the ones that gave me the permission to be able to use their name into the Yosemite. So they, I worked really close with them and they gave me permission to do all of that without getting in trouble with copyright and their stealing. Because that's the biggest thing that happens is people will use these organizations to falsely um, receive money that goes right. nowhere. So that's the biggest issue. <laughs> so and they were nice enough to let me do that. So. One thing I'm wondering, I don't know if you've come across this, but what about the family of veterans? I mean, do some of these, the spouses and children, do they need therapy? I would think that some of these things, I know they're not, they didn't experience combat, but just dealing with with you the, yeah pretty much I mean that's that's what I was thinking I was thinking I mean I, I can only imagine how it's got to be on them and I don't think the, does the military even cover that for a, a spouse needs therapy of all that I mean do they I've, I've never uh, looked into it I do know that so um, I was married for almost 13 years and they allowed me to have they would take care of the marriage counseling only because I have PTSD okay so I never asked my former spouse to go with me into any therapy. However, she always said, maybe I should go talk to them because I'm sure that there is something that is portrayed that I'm doing that would be more than maybe what I'm 
letting my counselors or people know about right, it. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, so, but no, I don't, I don't know if they do or not. They, they should, because it's vital. <laughs> well, these are things I all, I would really love to see change and really want to see happen, because like I said, I care very deeply about a lot of my friends have experienced this, and so I, I was just wondering as a community what we can do. I think you hit the nail on the head when you're talking about talking to your congressman um, and promoting events it's like 22 Too Many and, and letting people know that, hey, you care, you want to see a change, and, and see if it provokes something out here in the, in the real world, because there is something happening within the military community with the whole um, conferencing and talking and training just even people at a small level like myself to interact with soldiers dealing with the trauma. Okay, Ryan, now I'm going to switch gears here. Why, why, why did you pick August, the hottest month of the year, to do the site? <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> excuse me. So, first of all, the park, some of those trails don't open up until mid-June because of the snow levels. So, you have snow to deal with in the early parts of June. July is the 4th of July, so you got to deal with the holiday. Um, August. Nobody wants to be in that heat. <laughs> okay, now that makes sense. <laughs> then you climb up to those altitudes, and it's only 80. Okay. You know, the highest we're going to be going is about 10,500. It's going to be cold at night, but while you're walking, it's 75, 82 degrees. So it's nice. <laughs> er. And then you get down to the valley floor, then you start feeling the heat that comes in. But by then, you it just rolls off your back because there's a cheeseburger at the Yosemite Lodge <laughs> that you're going to go eat. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Before I let you go, let's plug your real estate. Um, you said you're a realtor, oh, so what well, do you... Oh, I appreciate it. Thanks. Yeah, let's... Um, I'm with Keller Williams Realty here in, in Fresno. Um, I'm working on building my business. I live in Mariposa. I drive. Do they have something to do with the 22 or is that just you? Because I saw that on the plug, so I wasn't sure. Is that just okay. you or they're participating? Um, they participate by, so we have these. So when a commission is given on the end of a transaction, um, 22 Too Many um, has given their nonprofit number to Keller Williams. And as agents uh, complete a sale, they donate a certain amount of their commission to the hike. Nice. So That's really sweet. And you got them involved in that. Correct, yes. That is yes. so awesome. And right? they're very open, very, very good people to interact with. And Keller Williams actually has a military side. So they have, so when they have these like mega camps and then all these realtors get together and talk, Keller Williams created a military. And so just real estate agents who are military veterans, we all get to get together and hang out and talk real estate and military at the same time. It's just a really nice little advocate. And they're on the veteran part of the KW, the VE and the T has 22 stars in it. So even they realize the importance of bringing awareness about suicide. So it's That's great. Go Keller Williams. I have a, <laughs> I have a new respect for him. <laughs> well, awesome. So if you went about your houses, where do you like? Okay, I live, I work I've done real estate transactions here in Fresno, Clovis, um, and up in Mariposa. I live in Mariposa, and I drive to Fresno every day for the Army because I work full-time for them. Oh, okay. So, yeah. So I just make that commute every day. So if I'm driving it and you want to go see a house, I'm like, yeah, I'm on my way home. Let's go look at something. So nice. Okay, I'm out anyway, so it's just it's it's good. And I thought about working real estate up in the mountains, but the problem is, is after an hour and a half drive home, I really just want a beer and hang out with my family and not really do business. So I figured if I got a real estate company here in Fresno while I'm still in the business mindset, I would just go to the office, work for a little bit, and then go home. That's, That's good. Thank you so much.